Hey there, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. Oh, we've got stuff that you want to listen to tonight. We've got a lot of things, so don't leave, don't get bored, because you won't, because it's all fascinating, right? What do we got tonight? Oh, we're going to remember a little bit about Rupert Nev, or Neve. If you don't know who he is, you'll find out. Um, talk about specs that you might see in a video game audition. Hmm. Soundproofing a ceiling. How hard is it really? Um, audience, the ID for Mark II is out. Um, an Earthworks mic. What's Earthworks? We'll find out. Great. And uh, well, maybe we'll see what else we can get to. There's a lot to cover. Yeah, and I want to talk about people buying the wrong stuff because mm. boy, was that a week for that! Mm. Unbelievable. All that and more, and your questions. Put them in the Voice Over Body Shop Facebook chat room right now, because George and I will get to them in the next segment of the show. So or stay YouTube. Tuned. Both of them work. Or YouTube, or whatever, or smoke mm -hmm. signals. Voice Over Body Shop Tech Talk right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars. A Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. A professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, Remote Studio Connections for Everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Hey there, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or VO B S Tech Talk Tech Talk Tech Talk Tech Talk Tech Talk because you guys want VO Tech and when it comes to VO Tech you know there's only two guys that really know what they're talking about you know which is something we'll talk about consistently yeah consistently I mean when when you think about it we you know we've we've been doing this a long time. Uh, and there's a lot of people like, yeah, I do voiceover. Yeah. I know how to use a microphone. Yeah. Let me explain to you how to do all this compression and all this other stuff. And you got to do this and you got to do that. And this past week, a lot of that came to roost <laughs> to say the least. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but you know, if you need help with your home voiceover studio, if you really don't understand all this technology, you're totally intimidated by it. If it's, you know, because we hear this all the time and I know you hear this like every day. I, I'm, I'm, I'm technically challenged, uh, which I'm really Amish as, uh, one <laughs> very well-known actor would that. say, <laughs> Excuse me. um, if you're, <laughs> so if, if you really want to understand what really is involved in trying to create your home voiceover studio, there's really only two places to go. You got to go to a professional. And this is one of the other cool things is that people like, I, I have this, is this the way I do it? Unless you hear it, it when no one's ever going to be able to tell. So, you know, if you, if you, if you give us a sample of what's going on there, that helps a whole lot because otherwise there's no standard rules to what goes on in a home voiceover studio, because as I always say, Every voice is different. Every room is different. And it doesn't really matter which microphone you use, as long as it's not a bad one. Uh, 
the, the, the really there's a way it's supposed to sound and and George and I know what that's about and uh, so if you'd like to learn from professionals work with professionals have your stuff set up by professionals so all you have to do is hit record and be a voice actor which is what most of you want to do make your selection or talk to both of us we don't care it doesn't matter because George and I just you know we just want you guys to get things right if you want to work with George where do they go? They go to head over to George the dot tech or George the tech dot com. Yes, they both work and uh, you can book services there. Um, I've got a, a whole menu of different ways I can work with you, specific softwares, different specific issues that you might have. Maybe you have uh, microphone gas gear acquisition syndrome and you've got a we'll few of them yeah. and you don't know which is the right one for what you're doing so uh, i have a mic check service which many people don't probably know about just send in samples of your various mics that you've done and show me you know let me hear a consistent read over these different mics maybe even using their different alternative settings and i'll help rank them narrow it down tell you which is going to work best for you so that's just one of the many ways you can work with me and dan's site has got a wealth of ways he can work with you over at home voiceover studio.com there it is right down there uh yeah check it out see the the services that i offer i think the one that most people like to use uh as i was saying i want to hear what it sounds like is my specimen collection cup mm -hmm. uh, you click on that it's a dropbox and I will give you a very thorough analysis of your audio. And if I think it just needs a little tweak here, a little tweak there, we can we can talk about that. But if you really are, and I've heard some really bad stuff this week, if you really need to start from scratch, we can talk about a full consultation and get you up and running as soon as possible and not like in a month or two. Uh, sometimes it comes down to the equipment you're using. And again, we'll be we'll be talking about that a little bit later. Uh, but uh, Appreciate it. Go over to homevoiceoverstudio.com. And that's why we're here on VoiceOver Body Shop to help you with your home voiceover studio. And George collects all this stuff every week and we give it a name. We call it, it's time for George's Tech Update Now. <laughs> oh, I'm having fun with this Roadcaster Pro. It's a fun board. It's fun to hit buttons, isn't it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Well, I'll kick off the show with a little bit of a sad note. And there's, boy, was there, <laughs> there's just been too many uh, losses to entertainment in the last couple of months or weeks. Well, heck, I mean, I, we lost Chick Corea, which is my favorite jazz artist uh, growing up from probably 12 or 11. Crossed over uh, to a lot of different stuff, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, exactly. He created this, helped create this bridge between rock and jazz, you know, being a big star in the fusion world. They called it fusion, and uh, it got me into jazz early on as well. So uh, rest in peace, Chick. Uh, what a loss. Um, but also more pertinent to the audio of pro audio world, um, incredible engineer, technician, stu uh, gear designer, Rupert Neve uh, passed away at 94. And by all accounts, uh, up until his illness, he was still designing uh, recording equipment. I mean, he is as famous to the pro audio world, really, as Neumann is to, for microphones. When it comes to preamps, nobody is more, uh, has, there's, there's, I don't think there's anybody in the world of design of audio gear who we owe more to than um, Rupert Neve. And his designs attribute to, or contribute, contribute to so many other designs in the studio world. And some of the stuff doesn't even have his name on it. You know, of course, there's things that have his name on it, like the Neve famous famous neve mixing console like you see in this photo he's sitting in front of one of these big console <laughs> unbelievably <laughs> elaborate complex expensive uh studio installations these things these things could easily cost two three hundred thousand dollars plus to uh install and wire up and <laughs> they're amazing Don't i kind of went down i went down the rat hole last night on youtube watching uh documentaries about him, him, his designs and studios that use his consoles. It's just, if you like audio, you need to learn a little bit about the history of 
uh, Rupert Neve. I mean, uh, it's just an incredible. But anyway, we lost him, and uh, you know his designs and the equipment he designed will, of course, outlast him and will be used for many, many, many years to come. Because as I've said before about microphones, you know, all these mics we're using overwhelmingly. When you look at like a, a standard large diaphragm condenser mic, like here's a classic MXL 1006. This is one of the very, very earliest MXL microphones. They're all really just a take on the design from Neumann, the U of the original condenser microphones from 70, 80 years ago. And we're just making them cheaper and easier to attain and easier to use. That's really what's going on here. So in terms of mic preamps, Kind of the same deal. There are tons of mic microphone preamps you can buy nowadays that are just takes on the designs that he did over the years. Yeah, um, probably the most famous would be the the Neve, I guess, 1073. That's a very, very well-known uh, mic preamp that he invented. So anyway, very cool. If you have anything from Focusrite, all of the ISA brand stuff, the ISA line, that is based on his design. So when you get a Focusrite ISA-1, you're getting a mic preamp that he designed. And it was taken from a mixing console he designed. In fact, if you go on YouTube again, type in Focusrite mixer uh, design history of something Rupert Neve. There's an incredible story of the fact that there's only 10 Focusrite brand mixing consoles in the entire world. And they talk about who's using them and why. And what it takes to run one of these consoles. Just kind of sure. fun stuff. Yeah. Um, vid okay, so we've talked about this a bit on the show, but I've been getting really irked by these specs that are going out for folks who are doing auditions for video games. Um, Dan, are you taking any uh, auditions for video game stuff at all? Have you seen here, these specs? Here and there, if I see something, it's a character that I could do or something. I'm, I'm, yeah. I will audition for it. Yeah. And I'm seeing these a lot, and and, and people will always will, will will they'll say, "Hey, I got these specs that say something like this," and I'll I keep saying, "I want to see the real. I want to see these specs. Will you please send them to me?" And one of our friends did, anonymously sent them to me because he sent, uh, you know, he sent me the actual audition script, which obviously is under NDA. So I just snipped out the copy that was in there, and this is what it says: recording capability. Throughout the current stay-at-home order, our engineers will also be evaluating audition files and weighing in on final decisions, a.k.a. the sound of your studio has a big part of you booking this gig or not. Please be sure that your audition accurately reflects your home recording setup. Please do not do any post-processing, equalizing, compression, reverb, etc. Ideally, your average level should be... Okay, this is where it gets nebulous. Ideally, your average levels should hover around minus 18 dB. What does that mean? Now, Dan, how would you interpret that? Your levels, average levels should hover around minus 18 dB. What does I, that mean to you? I, I think the word hover just doesn't belong in the sentence. Uh, that would help a whole lot because generally we like people to modulate at least to minus nine consistently and peak between, say, minus six and minus four to have a fat enough signal, but averaging minus 18, that what just sounds that? a little loud, actually. Well, I was going to say, do they mean average levels around minus 18? That, that means they mean, but that's not what they're saying. Well, that would be, well, I think of average levels as RMS. Right. And in order to get levels of an RMS of minus 18, you have to speak consistently loudly like this over all the entire recording or... You have to use a limiter. There's right. no two ways about it. So, um, so I, I've been having, I've really honestly been having a hard time telling my clients what they're supposed to actually be doing. Because does that mean the peaks should never go above minus 18? Because now you're going to have this little tiny waveform across the screen. <laughs> so this spec is making me endlessly crazy. And I would love, love, love if any engineer who is sending this out or anybody can interpret what they really mean by this. What do they really, really want? Because that's making me crazy. Next, at the end of the audition, it says, please state one, your microphone. And they put in parentheses just to give you a little 
you know, just to intimidate you, give you anxiety about what microphone <laughs> they think you think you should have. They say Sennheiser 416 or Neumann TLM 103 slash U87 preferred. Now, that final word in that sentence is preferred. Right. So please do not get all caught up in the fact that those mics are listed. It doesn't mean you have to have those to book these gigs. They're just trying to give you an example of what a high-quality studio condenser mic is. In and a high-quality studio. Yeah, and it has to be part of a high-quality studio, which in no way is represented in these questions. The next question is, what's your preamp? We know that doesn't make a freaking hell of difference. You could use a Scarlett Solo, $100 interface, and that could be the preamp. And the right. quality will be fantastic. So it's it's it, crazy. Right. And then they ask, what interface are you using? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, this one just says preamp. But what they really probably mean is, what is your interface? I'm guessing. And then it says, are you set up for Source Connect? And that's pretty straightforward. We all know that that's being used a lot. Um, but also, I noticed a little breadcrumb in these messages that is becoming more common as I have people send me copies showing the N, the last N in Neumann is always missing. It's spelled N U N E U M A N without the second N. So, whoever, obviously, this is being just recycled and copy pasted over and over, but somebody mistyped it some point along the way and i'd love to find out who that was and that would give you an idea where the spec is coming from when, yeah, when, they, when they ask me i usually say well i'm using an alfonso d credenza yeah <laughs> yes and if my dad's watching i'm using a tellori de cesco <laughs> that's for my dad um anyway, so yeah. that's a, a little that's, rant but yeah okay it's I, making I, me crazy it should be now, um, I'm having a couple of clients right now wanting to get their studios or their spaces soundproofed from the st from the story above. So they're moving into the basement or the they're on, on the upstairs. Yeah, and they're on the lower floor. <laughs> and we're getting into what it takes to soundproof that. And I'm telling you, it is not simple. Um, a great f a guy who's become a friend who I met through Byron Wagner. He's a brilliant audio uh, acoustician and vibrational vibration consultant. He knows everything about sound and how it transmits through structures and everything. And he and I have been bouncing back and forth on these designs. And I'll tell you, if you think that buying a studio bricks or any room booth and just sticking it in your basement is going to stop the sound of the footfall, you are sorely mistaken. So if that is your goal, if you're trying to keep it so the kids and the family upstairs can live their lives while you are being in their studio, <laughs> it's going to take more than just an ISO booth. So I've been recommending heavily designs that are passed on to me from this amazing fellow named Skip Queenie, 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 Keeney, I think his last name. Sorry, Skip. Um, and, uh, and trust me, if you, if you need this, let me know because we have a design that will do the job. Um, it was tested in a studio he built, or actually at home theater space that he made for uh, the owner of Tom's Shoes and his massive multi-million dollar mansion. And uh, it's, a, it's a system that's proven to work. So let me know if that's something you need to do. But it is definitely more than just spraying some foam or ins putting insulation in. It takes a lot of layers of material to do it right. Um, a couple of pieces of gear. The Audient ID4 Mark II has just been released, as well as the ID14. Um, the ID4 Mark II is interesting in that it still works and essentially works and looks like the original, but they changed a few basic things. One of them that you, may, you really may appreciate is they changed the taper, I believe. They changed the taper of the gain pot. Did they remember move we, a little bit? Remember we talked about how like you have yeah. to turn the gain almost all the way up there's more the gain on the lower than in the last 20% than there is in the prior 80. And there was some scientific explanation for why they do it that way, but I believe they have changed that and made it more usable. So that's one thing that's nice. And two, if you need loopback capabilities, you can now install a driver, a companion software control panel with the Mark II, and you can now have that abilities to set up the loopback for playing back. Uh, takes you've recorded back down the line on Source Connect or 
or it's not usually Source Connect, but say Skype and things like that. So it's nice that they've baked that in, but the beauty of it is you don't have to use it. So you can use it without. I like that a lot. Um, another one that just came across my uh, my radar is the Earth White Earthworks, sorry, Earthworks Icon microphones. Um, they have a USB and they have a Pro. The USB is obviously USB. The Pro version is non-USB. Uh, it just has an XLR jack. Now, what's really weird to me is the pricing on how they price these. The USB mic, because it's not Pro, is $300. The Pro version with the XLR jack is $500. From what I can tell, they're identical from the microphone down. So like the capsule and the, the actual design of these things, they look absolutely fantastic. In fact, I'll show you how cool one of these mics looks if I do a share screen of this tab in my browser, you'll be able to see how cool these mics look. And I know it ain't all about the microphone, folks, but these uh, are an interesting take on industrial design. And we all know how you love industrial design. <laughs> Sometimes it's really cool to look at a really cool mic. But anyway, here's here's what these mics Ooh. look like. They both have the same machined out of stainless steel chassis. And they use the Triad Orbit mount. Ooh. Remember, we've we've talked about them before. Yeah. That actually is included with every microphone. It comes with this ball joint with the uh, the quick disconnect thing. Mm -hmm. If anybody's bought those, they know how expensive these things are. I mean, already the the just the amount it comes with is like a, a hundred bucks, maybe a little less. Hmm. And um, but anyway, it's funny because the XLR you would think would be it would be the same price because it doesn't have a gain control a USB interface, a headphone jack or anything, but it's kind of odd that they, that they're priced that way. But they do have two versions, the Pro and the USB. And the USB has a proper gain control on the bottom of the mic, which is really nice, a proper gain level control. Anyway, I've heard some samples. I haven't heard it for myself yet, but um, from what I've heard, I was very impressed with its fidelity. And it is not, it looks like your typical, your typical end address broadcaster dynamic mic but on the inside it's actually a small diaphragm condenser so it's a very it's a very interesting microphone and uh if anybody's looking for something a little bit unique or if you know you're going to be on camera you want something that looks extra cool or you just want to you got gearitis and you want to try something new um from what i can see these are these could be a really nice usb microphone option for someone that wants something really really simple to use Cool. Um, anyway, so Dan, let's talk about bad purchases. Now, does this have anything to do with your upgrading to Big Sur? Uh, no. <laughs> or how about buying a new M1? Is that I a bad purchase? No, it's not a bad purchase. <laughs> not a bad purchase at all. After after you've been bragging about your MacBook Air for the last... Uh, oh, uh, this little old thing? Yeah, you know, and then my son ordered one and he got <laughs> his and he said, oh, it's really fast. It's really nice. Yeah. Uh, so I ordered one. If anyone wants to buy an old, uh, and not necessarily old, but a, a used, uh, Mac mini, a 2018 Mac mini with, you know, you know decked out it, it's, it's a, it's 16 gigabytes of Ram two fifty six hard drive, which is all you really need. And, uh, it was great. And I, and I loved it. And then everybody's, Oh, this thing is so much faster. You got to get the M one. So I'm like, okay. So I did, it came in. And, you know, it says if upgrading to Big Sur, make sure your current OS is fully updated. I, you know, they, they sent it to you, but there had been updates in the week or so that it came from Zhengzhou, China, of or course, wherever right. they come from. And uh, there was an update and I tried to do the migration and, you know, it created it. Thank Wang you. It, Thanks for Zhou, Zhou, yeah, and in, in that ear. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it, it created the same user account, but not entirely. And I'm like, Ugh. uh, yeah. So I'm like, oh, how do you print steak? But they're like, oh, oh, okay. You know, factory reset on it, tried it again, boom. Suddenly my old computer was on my new computer. My old computer now needs to be drained of all of its information and it works just as well. And it's really fast. Uh, yeah. And quiet, right? You never hear the fan. There's no fan and it works. doesn't make any heat. Well. Yeah. So, that is a good thing. And, uh, but you know, make sure everything is updated when you, when you update, uh, your, your, your OS. So yeah, we yeah, run into this too. 
Yeah, yep. if you're, if you're going to upgrade to Big Sur, make sure the version you're on. Sue figured this out on her own. Make sure that if you're going to make that upgrade to Big Sur, and, you know, it's getting to the point where it's maturing. And so if you have done your due diligence and backed up your computer and made sure all of your software and hardware that you use to make a living are truly compatible with Big Sur, it's probably okay to make that upgrade, but make sure you're already updated on whatever OS you're currently on to make sure that that upgrade's going to go okay. That's very, very important. Yeah. When it does, it's boom. When it's not, it's like, what? So only one real gotcha was the migration. Yeah, that was really it. You know, and, you know, and, and, you know, and setting a new, new passwords and stuff like that, right. you know, but other than that, everything was right there and, you know, all the programs just started right up. So the bad purchases, who was yeah. making bad purchases this week? It wasn't you. Oh. No, I, I don't make bad purchases. I, <laughs> I think about these things. I do my <laughs> research before I purchase. He well, calls me. yeah. I mean, I had a couple of clients this week. One guy who had called uh, we, we, Tweet Smarter, uh, wh whatever the name of the company is that makes, uh, you know, that sells gear. Uh, and, you know, sometimes, you, you know Dan's number one rule of retail, never walk into Banjo Emporium or go over to one of the sites and say, I'm a voice actor, I'm building a voiceover studio, what do I need? Well, this poor guy, uh, well, first off, they sold him an Apollo twin. Now, if you don't know what an Apollo twin is for, it doesn't sound better than a Focusrite 2i2 or Solo. It's the stuff that comes with it that takes 25 years to learn and master. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. That's, that was bad enough. So we got it. Okay. So we got, I'm, I'm keeping score here. He's got an Apollo twin and he made, did he get the twin X? By chance, is that the one that uh, I got? I don't know which exactly which let's, one it was. Let's assume he paid a thousand bucks for the tool. Okay, Keep yeah, I think here. it's something like that. And okay. then they sell him a Universal Audio L610 preamp. LA610. That's uh, what? How much are one of those suckers? Eighteen hundred dollars. Got it. Got it. And All he's right. like, "Why? You know, I don't think I've got it sounding right." I said, "What microphone? What microphone?" He had a four sixteen. Okay, a thousand. Or maybe it was a 103. It was one of those. Some two. around 1,000-ish. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Any, any yeah. other yeah. crazy things that they sold them in the chain? Uh, that was about it. I thought that was okay. plenty. I think they figured so, they had reached their limit on what this guy was going to spend. Add some headphones, some other gadgets and cables, probably an $80 mic cable. Well over $4,000 worth of gear. Right. It was a good uh, sale. Yeah, for them. Uh, but the second I said, please take the L610 out of your chain, and he does, he goes, well, God, that sounds a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> like, send it back. Sell it to a rock band on, on eBay or something like that. And then how it? about the lady that you helped out? Uh, she right. reached out to us for some help. And I said, I don't feel like helping <laughs> at this time of the morning. Dan, are you insane? Do you want to do it? And Well, we know I'm insane. Said. Yes. Um, so Dan helped out a lady in uh, in Spain, and at I think it was eight a.m. her time, and it was midnight here. Yeah. And the wife is like, "Where are you going, and why are you doing this now?" And I'm like, "And what's her name?" Uh, <laughs> just kidding. Um, <laughs> anyway, so, so what did, what was the gear she bought? I remember seeing the name in the in the email was, and thinking, "What is that?" Well, the, the product was called an Anubis. I thought it was a typo. Yeah, I, I thought because I'd never heard of it. No, so you know, so I know I had a few hours to prepare, and I typed in you know Anubis, you know, in the model number manual, and got the manual for this thing. What this thing is now? What what happened was is the people who had sold her her booth had recommended to her to a an establishment in Germany for a good interface. And this thing is probably about eighteen hundred bucks. It is eighteen ninety nine, nineteen hundred bucks. And what it's designed for is to remotely control multi tracking of musicians or doing interviews or stuff like that. And it's basically it, a mega Apollo that yeah. has a heck of a lot more features. Right, but it's really designed to remote control somebody else's microphone in their studio and stuff like that, and wow. and control levels, which has nothing to do with voiceover. And you know, and she's like, I can't get it to record. Well, the problem turned out to be that she had not downloaded the you know the software for it. Right, and and then 
looking at the software and saying, okay, <laughs> turn the phantom power on for starters, and then go into twisted wave and make sure that, that was the input and boom, suddenly it's working again. This thing is and, really, and it does direct stream digital, which most of you have never even heard of. Trust me. What do you need that for? It yeah. does 192 kilohertz sample rate. It does 22.2 surround sound mixing. Stop talk talking about, about it because then people are going to want to buy one. Talk about overkill. <laughs> I mean, it is no doubt absolutely next level stuff that has zero relevance to a voice actor. Right. So anyway, I said, go <sighs> buy a focus right solo and, you know, for like, you know, $1,800 less and it sounds <laughs> just as good. Um, and, and it is a lot easier to use too. So yeah, that's the big thing. Like we're not, it's, you know, we don't, we're not anti good sounding equipment per se, but so much of it is so unnecessarily complex. Right. And you have now a signal chain that you have to manage the gain staging and you have to know where you should actually adjust the gain out of these seven knobs that are on these pieces of gear. And it's, it's just too much to be an actor and engineer yourself. It's too complex. Right. Which is what we teach is how do you get in there, hit record and do your job and yeah. not worry about all this other stuff because all that other stuff is, you know, that these people were trying to deal with, with was irrelevant, you know, good acoustics, proper mic technique, proper microphone and setting proper levels. That's all you're responsible for all these little tiny things. You know, if you want to adjust a little tiny thing for room correction, that's what George and his stacks are for. And, you know, if you've got, you know, a little bit of rumble at the bottom, you know, use a little bit of EQ, but don't try to futz with your actually actual sound of your voice. Try to deal with the other things. And to me, everything is physical. Uh, so, you know, make sure that your environment is right. Uh, because that's really what's going to make everything else a lot easier. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's my rant on don't go, you know, if you're going to buy stuff, watch all 200 episodes of voiceover body shop. And, and of course all 51 episodes now of tech talk, where we say this about every other week, don't buy this stuff or buy or, the simple stuff or, or take a shortcut. Or take and just hire one of us. That's, I think, the, the overriding message here. Right. You know, go over to georgethe.tech or homevoiceoverstudio.com. We know the right answers. Everybody else is like, well, they're experts in one studio, their own. Right. We've done probably well over a thousand between the two of us. Uh, oh, definitely. And we we've heard it all. Anyway, uh, we got a few questions and we can go on to a couple other things, but if you've got a question for us, throw it in the chat room right now. Jeff Holman is standing by and, uh, we'll get to your questions about your home voiceover studio right after these incredibly important messages. Yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching voiceover body shop. So I was talking to Harlan Hogan this morning. He describes Chicago as having permafrost with more snow on the way. But something warmed his heart. A letter from a satisfied voiceover essentials customer. And here's what he said. Hi, Harlan. Getting started in the voiceover business and want a big value for your dollar? Look no further than Harlan's Portabooth Pro and the VO1A mic. These got me started and have proven valuable in producing over 50 titles on Audible. Great results for a great price right out of the box. Douglas Burke, the agile narrator. So if you do audiobooks, clearly these two products from voiceoveressentials.com can help you get it done. Go on over to voiceoveressentials.com to see all the great voiceover recording equipment and accessories you'll ever need. That's voiceoveressentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan's signature series products like the VO1A mic and the Porter Booth Pro and Plus. Thanks, Harlan. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Look what you made me do. Power 103.9. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Uh, okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. 
Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge rewards until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the voiceover body shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. Let's talk about source elements, the creators of Source Connect. Uh, boy, you guys, you're quite familiar with Source Connect. We've even already talked about it during this show because, yes, it's on the audition requests of many, many of the productions that are going on right now in voiceover, especially the big time ones, the video games, the high budget productions where the engineer wants to have total control of the production workflow and wants your audio sounding pristine, but also being piped right into a track in Pro Tools. And that's what Source Connect allows the studio to do. It does it so elegantly. It was designed for this from the get-go, from the ground up, for this purpose. So in order to do that, you do have to have software on your computer that will connect you to those studios. And that's called Source Connect Standard. Um, you want to get a subscription. And I, re I recommend the subscription. You can do a buyout, one-time buy. But I recommend the subscription. It can really be a good idea because there are new things coming. And you will always be up to date with the latest updates. And you'll always have access to their support. So check it out. If you want to get it set up, go to source-elements.com and check out their new website, which has made it easier to get started with Source Connect. And get the ball rolling. Let us know your what your first Source Connect gig was. Thanks a lot for listening. We'll be right back to answer tech questions. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez. And you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice of Our Body Shop. And we're back. Boom, boom. Boom, doom, 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 doom. All right. Question I love time. it when we get to do tech talk and we get to answer questions. This is really, I mean, that's what we do professionally all day long. It's people asking questions, usually the same question over and over again, but, uh, or should I buy this L610 that they're recommending? Oh. From? <laughs> Don't buy that right. stuff. You'll save yourself so much trouble. Just buy the simple stuff that we recommend. Anyway, we got a couple of questions here from our humongous worldwide audience. Uh, one for me here uh, from Jim McNicholas. Uh, what are your thoughts on marketing yourself? Where do you get the best return? Uh, you know, last week we had Fred Melamed on, and and he's he made it pretty clear. He says, "What what's going to give you the best return? Be the best at what you are. Uh, you know, be a good voice actor." Uh, but you know, how do you market yourself? Everybody's got different ways of doing it. Uh, and, and what gives you the best return? The one that you work the hardest on. And if you're working hard on being a good actor, someone's going to notice you, uh, you know, but you can, you can be on the pay to plays. Sometimes those work out. Sometimes, you know, it doesn't, uh, also you can, you know, the, are, are, you know, you can try LinkedIn. There's so many different things you can try and you've got to find what's going to work for you. You know, I know what works for me and that's, I've been doing this literally since the end of the next administration. So <laughs> I, I have a little bit of experience about how to get out there and do this stuff. But, uh, with, with the modern online voiceover world, it really is your responsibility to go out and find the work. And that means cold calling, emailing, uh, doing your homework. And that really is what, uh, is going to make it happen. And if, it's too much work for you to do that. You're in trouble because no one else is going to do it for you. An agent getting an agent's not going to do it for you uh, because an agent's not going to be knocking on your door until you're making enough money to make it worth their while. Yeah. You got to know your client too. Um, if you're yeah. looking, if you're, if you're doing the wrong kind of, it's like fishing, if you're using the wrong lure, you're not going to pull on that fish you're looking for. Right. I mean, you have to use techniques that will reach, the kinds of clients you're looking for. So if you're marketing to just local businesses, hoping to get on their phone system or on their, you know, their local radio spot, 
then cold calling them might work pretty well, but yeah. it depends, you know, you have to know your client and the way they look to be reached out to. It's probably very important. Yeah. You've got to be, we got to do it face to face. Interesting. Jake Thomas Garner. Uh, do you think it will ever go back to artists being called into studios to record voiceovers? I think that's pretty obvious that it will. For sure. Uh, I mean, it's going to happen eventually. You got all these studios out there and, yeah. you know, and, and amazingly, I think my wife was reading somewhere. It's been the lowest flu season on record. Nobody's getting the flu. That's right. You know, it's like everybody's washing their hands everywhere. So they're not getting right. the flu. Right. Exactly. You know, and the people that aren't are getting COVID. Uh, so I, I think that says a lot for that. Um, you know, those germs are always out there, but yeah, eventually they're going to let us back into the studios. Um, but but now that a lot of producers are seeing that some really good quality stuff can come out of your, your closet, even though they think you're in some big expensive place that George built, um, that, uh, it is, uh, it's, it's cost effective to do stuff from home. And, uh, I think that, uh, the work that people are doing now to get their, uh, their home studios up to snuff is going to pay off for those people that do it right. And, back to the last question are really good voice actors. What do you right. think? Yeah. I, yeah, no, there's no doubt that especially in the kind of work that is traditionally done in a commercial studio, I think a much of it will return. Um, but there, there's gotta be some cases where uh, actors got cast on shows and things who don't live in LA and are they going to now start flying them in? When they could re-record, when they could continue to do the production remotely, I probably doubt that. But whatever they choose to do, it's going to be because it's good for their bottom line. So if you yeah. being there is going to save them money, you'll be there. If you working remotely the way you have during the during this period is uh, actually ending up saving them money, then you're going to keep working remotely that's really what's going to determine how this goes down, you know? So it's going to depend. We shall see. We shall see. Jeff Holman, our very own Jeff Holman. He says, how far away can you get from a Sennheiser 416 capsule if you have a good studio and still have it pick you or pick you up well? Um, good question. That's a good question. I mean, these mics... This is a sen this isn't a Sennheiser. This is the Rode, but it's a shotgun mic in the in the vein of the Sennheiser. Um, if the room's acoustics are well tuned, like say you're in a in a good quality commercial grade uh, or television or film studio quality studio with very high ceilings, but the room is really well acoustically tuned, you can be quite far away. Um, I mean, think about it. These microphones were really designed to to have a long reach. Um, on the end of a boom pole, hovering above the head of the actor, sometimes several feet, so they're not on camera. And they do a very, very good job of this when they're aimed correctly and everything is set up correctly. So, yeah, you can be quite far away. Um, this is a dumb experiment because I certainly don't have a well-tuned room. But I can stand... Let's see. Uh... I'm going to guess I'm I'm about two feet away right now. So now you're starting to really hear the room become a lot more of a factor. I'm projecting a lot more because if I don't, I won't read quite as well. And so I'm pretty far away from it right now. But yes, unfortunately, I'm getting a lot of bounce off the ceiling. The room's uh, reverberation has become a lot more of a factor. So because I'm not in a great sounding room because it's not been tuned Let's just put it this way. I'm doing the bare minimum to make my room usable. Um, then I'm going to work closer distances here. And in some cases, if I really want to sound like I'm on the radio, I might be right here. Yeah, be right so, there. And it's 20 yes. degrees right now in Chicago. And we've got some interesting <laughs> from City Rollins. Exactly. So, yeah. So, question, the answer is you can be quite far away in a really good sounding room that's well tuned and that is really quiet. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, there, there are, We've discovered that there is a, you know, a good, a couple of good standard distances with a studio condenser mic. You know, I mean, like, you know, you're in a small room, you can be fairly close, but you know, 
I've measured this. This is exact, exactly eight inches. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and you know, so if, if you're about this distance, that's the way other people hear you. And the same thing with the 416, it can be at the same height and, you know, in the same distance. And that's really, it's really going to work unless you're like doing promo, in which case you can really get up on it, which is, you know, really what a lot of people. Yeah. Use. When you want a 416 to be in what I would call like a sales mode, being up close is going to give you that much more aggressive, almost compressed sound. And when you want it to sound a lot more natural, more balanced, more like a large diaphragm condenser mic, backing away does that does that pretty well yeah now here's a great question from fred north all right this this happened to me this morning believe it or not because we were we were setting up for a dubbing session my son jacob got a job dubbing a, a, a you know some tv show and uh from another place and it says i see that the id4 mark ii says it uses USB-C. will an adapter be clean enough to use it in my chain you know, so I, we, we were using the roadcaster. We're having a problem with it. it. Goes well. Let me try the, you know, let let let's try the uh, the focus right two i two, and then I'm trying to find all these. What kind of adapter does he mean? Does he mean a, a USB well, adapter? Well, I mean, it, you might have one of these guys that goes into okay. one of these. That's USB B. That's what B. that connector is right. called. So, but USB C is a lot smaller, and the as big as the the roadcaster is it has a much smaller usb jack on it and that's I'm, a usb c connector right there it's become so, a lot more common now right but can you use an adapter with that well here's an adapter no you just happen to have one and <laughs> this is well this is like this little kind of clever oh, multifunctional yeah. adapter right that does multiple different co uh, formats the uh, the USB A port flips open and reveals a micro USB, which is very interesting. Lightning, it's got USB C and it's got Lightning. Um, essentially, USB C is just a new standard for the connector. That's that's the jack that's on the back. But the cable it's going to use is generally going to be a standard USB A connector that goes into your computer. So you should not need any kind of weird adapters. Um, most units will just come with that cable. Some gear may come with a USB-C to USB-C cable, which has that connector on, oops, this one, on both ends. Um, and that's nice if you have a new MacBook, one of the new Macs with a USB-C connector on the machine, then you don't need any adapters. Um, but uh, getting the right cable for the job is nice, but you should rarely need any adapters. Um, just make sure that, you know, you've got the right connections for the machine you're using. I wouldn't worry about it too much. All right. Okay. Uh, get the next one from Pamela Urar. Urar. Okay. Um, I have a Focusrite Solo with Audio Technica ATX, uh, AT, I think those are ATH M20X is the full name. Headphones. They are really, they're, they're really good budget headphones. Um, they're both new. Um, I'm on an El Capitan Mac, which so is not about new. five, five, six <laughs> years ago. For some reason, whenever I'm on a Zoom call, though, the sound goes. Bye. I guess means goes away. I suppose is what she means. Um, it works on my laptop speakers, but slowly starts crackling through the headphones until it becomes completely muffled. I've tried unplugging and restarting to no success. Where am I going wrong? Hmm. Um. That's a good question. Zoom is being updated all the time. Almost every time I check to see if there's an update for Zoom, there is. So I would do that first. I would make sure you're on the, you're on the most up-to-date version of Zoom. Um, and you didn't mention if you're recording or not during this, so I don't know if you're recording in some other program while this is happening or not. So if this is happening without recording, that definitely is rather unusual. Um, geez, she didn't say where the headphones are plugged in. Are they plugged into the solo or are they plugged into the Mac? Right. And what does she mean by muffled? And then, yeah, just, we really need to hear that kind of stuff. It's tough to troubleshoot. Yeah. That's uh that, that sounds like a, you know, interesting that I, I keep discovering there are bad units out there at that, uh, it can be. 
you know, new or, from the factory can have problems. It can't right. happen. Or a, a digital mismatch or something along those lines. Mm-hmm. Sometimes that, that'll throw things into a tizzy, especially on Zoom uh, and Skype <laughs> that we discovered. Um, I find these issues happen more when you're recording with some other program and there's some right. kind of a, a mismatch or a conflict. Right. Um, maybe you could record a little bit of what that noise sounds like. And I know it sounds a little complex, but record in your software and put the microphone literally <laughs> into in the headphone. The headphone. <laughs> Make sure direct monitoring is off so you don't get a massive feedback loop. And try to capture it, record that that bizarre noise, hmm. and send it to one of us so we can take a listen and help you troubleshoot it. But yeah, I don't have a direct, you know, surefire answer to that one. You could also reach out to Focusrite support too. They Act. might have some like, oh, well, you're running El Capitan, and on that version of OS, yeah, blah 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 blah, should, <laughs> should be really moving up on that. Yeah, yeah they still update some of the old the old the old uh, uh, platform. So sure. Uh, Joy B. Oh, it's time for back to local radio. Time for radio. <laughs> How much are you asking for the two eighteen, uh, the twenty eighteen? Oh, tradeo, <laughs> tradeo. <Tradio. laughs> yeah, it was like the classifieds on the radio when I worked at a station in Niagara Falls. No like, way. It's That's time for radio. Uh, yeah, so and so has uh, he's got an old pinball machine. <laughs> <Come> <laughs> Maybe this will happen on Clubhouse. Yeah, really. We could yeah. start the radio channel on Club and Club. I, I suppose I could mention a price, but then Facebook's going to go, well, no commercial mentions or anything like that. Yeah, really. Write, write, to, write to us at the guys at VOBS.TV and I'll, For sure. I'll, I'll talk to you about it. Uh, okay. Oh, there's a follow up from Pamela about her technical issue with Zoom. Oh, it's exactly. happening without recording, even. Just the headphones are plugged into the focus, right? Um, they're working in Audacity, but not Zoom. And I've tried Zoom in the browser and the download version. Boy, that's really weird, Pamela. Mm. Oof. I, I definitely would reach out to Focusrite. You may have some hardware hardware issue. There might be something in that unit that's not uh, working too hot. It could also possibly be a bad USB port on the computer. If Good there's point. two ports or more, try a different USB port. But yeah, I would maybe if that doesn't work, definitely reach out to Focusrite themselves. Yeah, sounds like something's draining something from something else. You mm-hmm. never know. Could be. Uh, okay, got time for one more here. It says, prepping for that big gig with a new client. Ask questions, test the engineer. George hears this a lot. <laughs> yeah, people I, ask I me all the time, quiet. what am I supposed to do? Or what are they expecting me to do? Or how am I going to know if it's going to work? Or um, I'm really nervous that I have it all set up right. Well, communicate with the engineer. Um, maybe it's a little intimidating. Uh, maybe you're worried that you'll come off as maybe an inexperienced or something if you have to ask. But honestly, there's so many new systems out there that's being asked, you know, you guys are being asked to use. And so... Um, and often and sometimes you're being asked to do a lot more steps or a lot more tasks than just being an actor. So you should really communicate with that that to the client. And if there is an engineer working with you on this job, communicate with them prior to the session. Make sure that everything's going to work together. Make sure that systems are all in sync and you're on the right versions. And you don't want surprises once the director or the clients are all waiting there in Zoom and you don't want to, you, you want to avoid that if you can. So a little preparation goes a long way and don't be afraid to ask. <laughs> don't just, don't be afraid to ask. I mean, tell them, tell them this is your first time doing this exact combination of systems and you want to be sure uh, everything goes off smoothly. I and mean, does that sound too That's hard? Does that sound uh, like a bad idea? Does that sound prof- unprofessional? No, you? With, like you said, with all of the, the, the different systems that are out there right now, and we know there will only be more as others fall by the wayside, I think it's pretty important to say, I have not used this particular system before. I'm used to this, this, and this. Right. Let's, let me, let's sync up here so when we do our session tomorrow, it works and we don't waste anybody's time. Right. We so, don't want any surprises. And yeah. it just makes, I think it makes you come off professional. Um, letting them know exactly the situation, uh, you know, that don't be, don't be concerned that you might look 
less than experienced or whatever. It just exactly. shows that you care and you want the job to go off well, I think. Absolutely. And if they don't say anything or they just don't reply, you, you tried, you know, uh, you did your job. And if the session has technical problems during the, the job, hopefully the engineer is really good at troubleshooting on the fly and it won't be time wasted. So, Absolutely. but that's, uh, you know, do your best to prepare. Absolutely. Well, speaking of wasting time, you've not wasted it for the last hour as we've jammed Gosh, on about, about uh, home voiceover studio technology. Some of it, maybe it goes over your head and some of it's like, oh, that's really simple. Well, that's why we're here. Anyway, we'll be back to wrap it all up into a nice tight little package right after these messages. Yep, this is VOBS. Proven anybody can have a show these days. Hey there, it's David H. Lawrence, the 17th with VO Heroes. And you may be watching VoiceOver Body Shop, VOBS, because you're interested in becoming a voice talent. And you looked around the internet, you found that this was a great place to come, and you're absolutely right. Um, but you don't have any of the knowledge yet as to how to get started. And I'd like to help you with that. I've got a free course online. You can take it anytime you want. It's called Getting Started in VoiceOver. And it walks you through the equipment you need, the business side of things, the actual categories of voiceover work that you'll likely be pursuing, and also the mindset that you need to have when you're getting started and moving into being successful at doing voiceover for a career. So if you're an actor or you're not an actor, you want to side grade from another business, you want to learn about voiceover, go to voheroes.com slash start. That's voheroes.com slash start for the VO Heroes Getting Started in VoiceOver class. And I'll see you there. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice of Body Shop. And we're back. Here on Voice of Body Shop. Yeah. Boy, Do you I recognize any of the parts inside this piece of amber? Uh, uh well, it looks like all sorts of stuff. <laughs> I can't quite see it quite clearly. What is it? There's one right there. An RCA oh, I, oh I, see, I see an, uh, an RCA jack there. Maybe and a capacitor. Capacitor. And... A resistor. Yeah. My dad no. made this, I don't know how long ago, my dad made this eons ago. It sat in his ham shack. This has his old call letters from being a ham radio operator in there too, WB3CWN. Mm -hmm. And he just sent it to me in a box of stuff. I just thought it was a really cool piece of, you know, gear tech history. You know, he just decided it'd be fun to mold a bunch of components into a piece and make Someone it like a paperweight. Up. <laughs> yeah, well, it's that's what they're doing. They're they're honing it down and <laughs> and shipping me things and in, in these in these. Yeah. Yeah, they're just sending me things in, in, uh, in, you know, they, they, every time they send me something, it's in a flat rate UPS or U.S. Postal Service priority box. And so they find ways to fill in all the nooks and crannies. Even if he has to send me some one little thing, they pack it full of stuff. And lately it's cassette tapes. Every right. box I get, <laughs> I get five cassettes. And then my dad Jacob, puts a post-it note. Jacob. Yeah. And then he puts a post-it note saying 75 left. So <laughs> I'm eventually going to have every cassette tape in their house mailed to me and now <laughs> in a cassette collection. Yeah. 
They're great oh, for putting man. out wind vanes and stuff like that. They flap in the wind just nice, <laughs> uh, especially on a sailboat. Oh, telltales. Uh, I got a whole cassette here. It's that'll it'll be fine. <laughs> anyway, who are our donors of the week? Oh, well, we have a few names that have trickled in this week. We have Christopher Epperson, Christy Burns, Graham Spicer, and this just in, Larry Hudson. All right. Thanks, Larry. Yeah. Appreciate it very much. Yeah. Next week on this very show, by the way, we've got our good friend, uh, Mary Lynn Wisner. Uh, if you're familiar with her at all, she oh, yeah. is a top coach and industry expert. She knows all the agents and she knows what it really takes to get going in this business. So she's going to be a great guest to ask Highly questions. Expected. Yeah. We've been wanting to get her on, but she always teaches on Monday night, but oh, she's, okay. she's free next. We Monday lucked out. So gotcha. On. All right. Uh, let's see. Hey, you need help? George, the tech, dot com or george what is the rest dot tech you know i keep making these slick domains <laughs> nobody it. can say them just george the tech.com it works fine yeah and <laughs> you, you can find me over at home voiceover studio.com uh where we will help you with your home studios uh, our thanks to our sponsors harlan hogan's voiceover essentials voiceover extra there it is source elements <laughs> voheroes.com VoiceActorWebsites.com and JMC Demos. Alrighty. Our thanks to Jeff Holman dragging all those questions off of Facebook and YouTube, apparently, uh, and uh, doing a great job with that. Sue Merlino, our marvelous technical director, getting everything right and in the right order. Thank you. Uh, and that's the most important thing, uh, getting the show out every week and Lee Penny for simply being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do us for us this week. Hopefully, you know, you hit record and everything works. Uh, but most importantly, if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO BS Tech Dog. Tech Dog. Tech Dog. Tech Dog. Tech Dog.